We're here with another episode of Before You Buy. Say it with me now, the show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. And today we're talking about Anthem. Yes, it's finally here. Now keep in mind, full transparency, this is first impressions of the early access version of the game that we've been playing since it was available and we maxed out the 10 hour trial with most of this footage recorded on Xbox One X and some Xbox One S with a little poking around on the PC as well. Anthem very obviously includes more content past the 10 hours including more end game stuff and eventual free planned updates coming in March because it's the nature of the game. It's a games as a service game. This game could very very much look drastically different six months from now, a year from now. Uh, same goes for a day one patch that's releasing on the real launch day, not the first launch day. It improves a lot of things, but still, what I'm looking at is just the bigger picture here. From what I've played, I'm just not that into it. It's not a total disaster like some people are making it out to be, but it's still very much not a game for me. If it is for you, good. I'm gonna try to be measured here. Anthem is very much a looter shooter. A game designed to keep you endlessly playing, earning things, crafting things, finding weapons with cooler names and better stats, and customizing your javelin mech suit. I've already had people get mad at me for daring to compare it to something like Destiny, The Division, or hell, the really beloved Warframe, but hey, just so you get it, know that it can be considered structured roughly like those games. And these types of games are not for everyone, but thankfully, at, at least, Anthem is a competently made shooter at that. In a lot of ways, it is like the Iron Man simulator I was hoping it would play like when it was first announced. You know, flying around in your javelin is just cool. There's a distinctive and really satisfying crack of your jets as you blast off, and it's really easy to navigate and fly and dodge to your liking, just through the environment and during combat as well. The entire mechanic of flying from the feedback to the sound to the way it controls is just really well done. And shooting works fairly well too. Uh, you know, enemies themselves sometimes have like a light floaty feel to them. It's only the case with some creatures, but, but it's weird. But the weapons and firing them, especially against larger characters, feels really satisfying. Using your abilities and your alt especially uh, does make you feel like you're kicking ass, especially when you set up a really good combo using everything wisely. Not to mention the fact that you can do a lot of it while flying or hovering, just makes it feel really intuitive and easy to master as well. It's absolutely at its best when it's challenging though, like Strongholds in particular, feels like the game is really getting into its best groove. If you're playing with a group of good friends and big challenging event, you know, that moment to moment play can be really fun. But the other half of the game, the thing that everything is designed around, I just didn't find compelling. I'm talking about progression, looting, and the grind. None of it, to me, feels satisfying or rewarding enough, and I, you know, I can't quite put my finger on it. I'm gonna try. Dropping a new weapon with better stats or re-rolling that weapon through the crafting thing just doesn't give me that rush like other loot-based games do. Guns, from what I've dropped, aren't exciting and generally just don't change as much as I'd like. There's not a lot of fanfare about it and not a lot of difference. Armor, while handled differently than other loot and crafting drops in the game, it, it is different. Uh, it just still doesn't come off as attractive or filled with amazing armor looks to grind towards as I'd hoped. I I'll give them major points for actual customization of the javelin's color and material wise though. I had a lot of fun picking out weird color concepts and look at other players being either complete badasses or dumb monstrosities, <laughs> but the progression for me just wasn't satisfying enough to chew into. The loop isn't as satisfying as I think it should be. You know, to keep me coming back weekly for more rewards and stuff. On many loading screens, the game constantly reminds you that things and rewards and content occurs on a weekly basis, but that would only work for me if I really felt the desire to come back week after week, and frankly, I just don't. Even if it does improve with endgame and updates, which it likely will, the fact that I don't like it now is already enough of a turnoff, and it might be for some other people. Another thing is that even though the game is getting a lot of free updates and stuff, which is really nice, a little turnoff, uh, the multiple currency microtransaction fueled store essentially presents itself right front and center in the second tab of the pause menu. Like you have to scroll past it to get to other important things you would access more regularly. So that might jam some people up. Look, this is a games as a service game. So there's a whole other conversation as to whether or not I should be judging this game on day one as it will likely get better as more stuff is added to make it less repetitive and tweaks to the loot and progression or improve to just make continuous play more compelling. So I'm trying to do both. I I'm trying to be really measured here because I wanted to like Anthem and I believe some of the foundation is good. But the other argument with games as a service is, you know, are they actually good? 
Lots of people will tell you, no, it's hot trash, they'll say. Anthem is divisive just like that. But putting that aside, one thing I was really looking forward to at the very least was that Bioware touch. Hell, this is the people that made Mass Effect, you know, the good ones, Dragon Age, Jade Empire, KOTOR. I mean, I was expecting some sort of grand personalized RPG experience in some way, you know, seeing as how the game has featured lots of characters and dialogue choices, but it falls somewhat flat. There's lots of jargon. It's heavy on world building, to me, almost a little too much because a lot of things the game doesn't do a good job of making you care about. But I'll say that a lot of the characters are fairly enjoyable and fun to watch on screen in their expressiveness and their voice acting. Early on, Owen, in particular, makes a great first impression, and more characters are introduced after a few hours that really shake things up. Cutscenes are absolutely dazzling because the game can look pretty good at times and the music and everything is big budget and top notch. But ultimately, existing in the world is where it just, it loses me. Fort Tarsus feels utterly lifeless compared to what I was expecting. I appreciate the fact that there are different factions in their own little areas where I can interact with them and rank up individual loyalties for them, but if it wasn't for that and a few other things, I'd just resort to sticking to the simplified social hub area where I can just access a lot of the things without going to the depressing world. It feels very much like a template for them to add stuff. They probably will. It's fine on paper, the art direction is cool, but I'd prefer if it were just more interesting day one. This is a matter of personal taste, of course. I, I don't really find the world you explore with your javelin to be that exciting either. It's big, it's huge, there's lots of enemies to kill, but you know, even if the game doesn't want to encourage me to explore, that's fine, but just, it's not interesting at all for me. Also, briefly, performance is something I think we need to talk about. It works fine on Xbox One X or PS4 Pro, it's more stable, but on One S like I experienced, and presumably a base PS4, uh, the frame rate is extremely subpar. The game should at least be stable. Look, like I said in the beginning, the moment to moment combat is the best aspect of the game. Do yourself a favor, once you unlock multiple javelins, definitely try out the Colossus. He, he became my favorite like later in. Playing with friends in a really hard combat area can merit some fun, but the rest of the bones of the game just aren't there yet. Like I said, I think the foundation is strong, but a foundation is only a foundation. I'm not really into anything else the game wants me to engage in, really. If you are into it, good. I I'm happy you found a game like this to enjoy, but I'm not sold. But now, of course, this is a before you buy. You know how this works by now. I give you some pros, some cons, and a lot of personal opinion thrown in there. So now I definitely want to hear yours down in the comments. Everybody's got something to say about this game. So just let loose. Let's go. I'm sure some people are going to be mad that I was too hard on the game, and I'm sure some people are going to be mad that I wasn't hard enough on the game. Ultimately though, man, as a Bioware fan, I am a little let down. But again, we want to talk about this down in the comments. Let's do it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, maybe you learned something, clicking the like button helps us out. We do really appreciate that. And if you're new, it's worth subscribing and hitting that notification bell because we put out new videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Good. Now grab a chunk of that meat. I'm sure the scars will eat the rest. Aha. Good. We got it. One slab of Ursic's ready to serve.